Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on Sage Tool Ops. Presenting today is Kaohu from Sage Software. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone is muted, so if you have questions, please type them into the questions box and we will address them at the end of the session. The webinar will be recorded and we will email out a copy to everyone later today. I will now turn it over to you, Kaohu. Thank you, Krista. And I wanted to thank the team at Accordion with providing me the opportunity to present to their customers today. Once again, everyone, my name is Kaohu. I'm a sales engineer with the Sage Construction and Real Estate team. Today, I'll be providing a high level overview of our tool tracking solution, Sage Tool Ops, showcasing the key features that address a few of the tool and equipment oriented business challenges you probably run in every single day. Here's a preview of how we'll be spending our time today. We'll be looking at the reality of tracking tools within your company, the challenges, the possibilities, and the solutions we offer to combat those challenges. Next, we'll take a look at how Toolwatch came to be and how it got developed over the years, and then we'll outline some of the solutions itself and present an overall overview. If you don't know what you own, you're not going to own it very long. Uh, a quick little uh, thought that I got from their founder, Don Kafka, who we'll be learning about here in a little bit, essentially highlighting the unbeknownst problem that we all seem to think is normal within our industry. Tool loss has been a challenge in our industry since the beginning of time. Companies have tried almost everything to keep track of tools, from engraving them with tracking codes, to painting tools different colors. Some of you may even be using a cage to store or stock your tools. But even with all these efforts, tools just seem to vanish or go unaccounted for. Not accounted for in those losses are the hours lost trying to track down and locate these tools. This avoidable time suck compounds the cost towards your bottom line. That loss of time eventually causes missed deadlines and costly delays when mobilizing your next project or job. These are examples of some of the daily questions you may receive or have yourself when attempting to track tools. Who is responsible for the tool? Which tool needs service and maintenance? When is it due back? Can I borrow it from another site instead of getting it from the warehouse that's very far away? Where is this tool that I need today? What's going on with all of that? Knowing the answers can mean the difference between hitting your revenue goals for the month, quarter, or even the year. ToolOps helps more than 4,000 organizations in more than 20 countries streamline the process of managing tools, equipment, and materials in an industry historically plagued by high levels of tool loss, damage, and hoarding. Its founder, Don Kafka, an electrical contractor at the time, found that his tools were slowly disappearing. After going through many different solutions to no avail, he finally opted to develop his own and ToolOps was born. Using a simple app, contractors can assign tools to field personnel. Field leaders can see what tools they're accountable for and requesting tools for their job site. Whether those tools are at the warehouse or a nearby job site, Field personnel can find requests and what is needed. With visibility, a company can reallocate idle tools to where they can be of better use and reduce tool hoarding. Work orders for individual tools and equipment can automatically be created depending upon different factors for that piece of equipment. Meter readings, dates, usage, all automatically prompting the shop back in uh, the yard to service or maintain that piece of equipment when it comes back. This allows your company to monitor these tools from the back office. The tracking of your assets fuel the analytics within ToolOps to help purchasing department ensure your tools are being returned and reduce any unnecessary spending. Currently, Sage 300 CRE customers are able to reference primary fields from accounting database, payroll employee, job, cost code, and 100 contractor customers can also enjoy some of these integration pieces as well. When we take a look at some of the added bonuses for different individuals or roles within a company, we see that a lot of our field employees and customers 
are able to verify tools, but also request tools ahead of time. That way, if they know that they need a specific uh, set of drills tomorrow for a specific project, they can request them today, and then they be delivered by the end of the afternoon or first thing in the morning. The warehouse can be notified when certain materials or consumables are getting low, further fueling the purchasing and receiving so that they can order more when access is low, but also making it easy to use when checking tools in and out. For your users back in the shop, they're able to regularly schedule tasks and maintenance for those bigger pieces of equipment, ensuring that when that truck does come back from the project, oil levels are checked, and any other calibrations need to be uh, identified when that piece of equipment comes back. And for that office staff, eliminating that paperwork and the overall duplication of entries that are going back and forth from the field to the office, and an overall reduction in confusion. Where is that equipment? How come it's not at that project? It was supposed to be there last week, but it's at this other job that's 20 miles away. Allowing you to track all of this information also helps you utilize and analyze equipment usage along with ROI of each piece of equipment and material. And with that, let's jump on over and take a look at my Sage Tool Ops. So as we mentioned, Sage Tool Ops is a cloud-based solution that allows you to access your equipment and analyze your usage from the office as well as out to the field. Your field users can simply pull up an app on their phone, request pieces of equipment, or see what's available on site and check things out accordingly. Your users back in the office will mainly be uh, interfacing with tool ops from here, just as I am on my laptop. I'll be going through the left-hand pane where I have my tools, materials, and additional features at a high level providing some context as to how each of these are used for our covered customers and how you may take advantage of some of the features yourselves. Since ToolOps is a cloud-based solution, a lot of the updates as well as enhancements automatically load to your system via the cloud. So right here when I land on my homepage, I'll see the new features list, give me a sense of what's available now, what's changed, or what might be coming in the next quarter or later on in the year. As I move towards my tools dashboard, I'm greeted with some uh, dashboard components, giving me, hey, some top tools that we're using, uh, some tools that may need some service, uh, tool loss percentage over, the net, over 90 days. I'm able to now see everything at a glance and drill into these pieces depending upon the dashboard's configuration. All of this information is real time, pulling directly from the cloud in the field, all in one place. When I take a look at my tool browser, I'll be able to see everything from drill bits to triple nickel benders, air scrubbers, or any other pieces of equipment that I want stored and tracked within the system. This can range from the GCs out there in the market all the way to the specialty subs allowing you to track big pieces of equipment, but also smaller pieces of equipment to ensure that nothing is ever lost. We categorize tools and equipment into two specific categories in tool ops. One being a unique tool versus a quantity tool. Some of the ways I describe that is with a quantity tool, think of that like 20 drills. They're all the same, you don't more so want to track each individual drill, you just want to know how many you have. Then there's unique drills. Maybe I have five air scrubbers. I want to know and track where each of those air scrubbers are. That's how you identify the use count for your tools when looking at the product to determine, oh, we're a smaller contractor, so we definitely want to know where every single drill is because we have 10 guys, 10 drills. Whereas a bigger company, may just want, may have a hundred drills, so we're just gonna track that under one quantity tool type. But as I drill into these different tools and tool models, I'll see this specific air scrubber. Under that, I'll see the long list of different air scrubbers specific to that model number, allowing me to track 
components necessary to either service or maintain this air scrubber, any accessories that go along with it perhaps. Even more importantly, cost information and service information. This is all what we'll see later on, fueling the analytics. Given this air scrubber cost, as well as the depreciation of the air scrubber, what am I getting back in an ROI? If this air scrubber was $900, am I getting $900 of you? this air scrubber uh, a fan broke the wheel busted I repaired it allowing you to track that one specific model but also drilling into the individual tools themselves in the event you want to track that also when we take a look at the tool records it can track everything from the service history to the cost like we've seen before but giving you that accountability now not only from the field and warehouse but now back in the office. Everyone's all on the same page, ensuring that once everything is tracked, we can analyze it later on in the quarter of the year to see how profitable the company was in tracking these pieces of equipment. Kits is also another great aspect of tool ops as we take a look at, with a specific kit or tool, how do we expand that to say, with that, specific kit, there are five things within. So instead of issuing five individual pieces of equipment, I'm able to select that certain kit and get that to a specific employee, ensuring that, hey, you know, within that kit, equipment to him and hold him accountable. When he returns that kit, so screws, uh, the safety goggles, a vest, so I'm going to write that off as cost, but when the drill comes back, I can pop that back into the tool, and then I can also have someone back in the warehouse be notified to refill that kit with a brand new vest, a brand new goggles, and a As we move along to some of the materials and consumables, dashboards and trackings, we'll be able to analyze a lot of the materials and their records to keep track nails, uh, safety cords, air hoses. I'm able to track the levels of these different pieces of materials and consumables back to my job, project, or even my actual employee. If I show that a certain employee is checking out a whole lot of materials and consumables, yet that employee is not supposed to be doing that, or it's, he's kind of checking out a few items more than everyone else, I'm now holding him accountable and able to track that within my reports, which we'll see here in a little bit. My low-level browser allows me to track a lot of those metrics to ensure uh, once, you know, safety goggles dip below 50, I know I have to order more or hold people accountable to see, hey, we're not supposed to dip below 50 safety goggles until July. It's January. What happened to all of our safety goggles? As we move along to pick tickets and transfers, this will be mainly where your warehouse and shop users live. Analyzing, hey, what's going on with all the transfers of equipment as well as from what location they're transferred from and to. Constantly tracking the movement of a piece of equipment and how the users are efficiently moving that back and forth. Are they requesting a piece of equipment from 50 miles away when there's the same amount of equipment or what they need right around the block or 10 miles away? I'm not able to track all of that to ensure that when something is transferred or moved, I'm moving it efficiently. And I'm not wasting any time, effort, and money pulling it from a site that is very, very far away versus one that is closer. With all of this information being pulled with items and equipment, me as the user back in the office obviously can see a lot of this. Uh, 
if and when you nutrition, we can all essentially your users will be barcodes or looking them up much like when you're searching for an item on Amazon. It's very intuitive and very easy for your fuel users to pick up and that's what it's meant to be. Uh, Level without making the process more cumbersome for the users in the field. As we move along through service and calibration, once again, more dashboards analyzing, hey, there may be some tools that need to be serviced. Coming over to my work orders or my service request, I'm able to see a brand new work order that got pulled for something specific for a shop truck. So if your service department who takes care of your own equipment need to be notified, it automatically notifies them of that information to say, hey, what service is requested, what needs to be done, along with any other tasks and instructions telling them what needs to be done. So rather than sifting through all that paperwork for, yeah, I think we serviced this truck about six months ago, it should, should, should be fine. Why are we looking at this again? I can go through the list or even the history of that piece of equipment. So I go through and check the tires, fluids, and check each thing off as it's being completed and marking that accordingly. Same thing goes with any instructions. If there's special instructions specific to this work order and piece of equipment, um, the alignment on this side of the truck is a little bit off. We already know that. Just move along to the next thing, do this and that, and it should be fine. Same thing goes with required tools. What if there's a specific tool needed to service that piece of equipment? Knowing ahead of time saves you the time and effort to know, oh, okay, I know exactly what to pull from the warehouse in order to fix, calibrate, or service this bigger piece of equipment. I no longer have to call anyone or harass anyone because it, maybe it's my second day at the job. I'm able to accommodate that a lot more efficiently and make this a more scalable model for my business. Simply setting it up and having it trigger that information automatically alleviates workflows and time along the way as your company grows more. Hello, I can. pink menus here indicating purchase orders. I'm able to go back and see some of the prior ones of different months, as well as drill into those details and see what makes up those specific purchase orders, whether it's for a you know cordless saw, a dolly, a vacuum. I'm now able to track that information and report off of it later on in the year when I'm taking a look at, you know, what have we replaced? What have we been ordering? Why are we still ordering these drills uh, on a regular basis when now we're tracking them much more efficiently and holding our employees accountable? When we take a look at the job costs and billing, this is that interacts with your accounting. When I take a look at the sheet, I'm able to daily rate, eating the analytics and costs that go into tracking
very top, they all change to blue. So now I'm looking at on the billing side of things with the rates, maybe for this, <clears throat> this emergency kit, the weekly rate is $4, allowing me to update, change, modify, or remove rates accordingly so that it affects all of my costs and billings much more efficiently as I start to use the tool more and more. tools, equipment, materials, consumables, service and calibration, purchasing and receiving. All of that information that's compiled is now feeding into the analytics within ToolOps. Covering everything, rightfully so, right down the list, just as we saw. I have all of these tool, tool reports where I can see tool activity specific to maybe one piece of equipment, maybe one category, or all my pieces of equipment for a certain time range. When was it checked out? Who used it? Where did it go from and to? I'm also able to see different types of reports for aging, certification, analyzing all that information to ensure when that piece of equipment is allocated to a project, how long was it out there for? Even though the job was 30 days, we expected the tool back in 15, came back after 25. Why is that? That's unaccounted, that's 10 days of cost that it didn't need to be out there. We only needed it out there for 15. Did somebody forget? Did somebody just leave it there unbeknownst? Now I can analyze a lot of that information to reduce the amount of cost that equipment is accumulating for that project. Also, depending upon what kind of pieces of equipment and tools you have, uh, things like certification when it comes to, hey, I can't use that specific truck or big piece of equipment until I have the certification. What certifications are needed? I can track that for each piece of equipment to ensure that employee has that certification and be notified if I allocate it to an employee who doesn't have the certification to let me know, hey, Jared got this piece of equipment allocated to him, but he doesn't have the right certifications yet. Is that correct? If he received it yesterday, maybe we just need to update his certifications within the system. Same thing goes with list reports, transfers, all of these reports analyze the information from those specific pieces of tools, employees, projects, and phases to ensure that you're now able to analyze all those details and make the right decisions when it comes to allocating tools to a project or an employee buying more tools, consumables, or materials at the end of the year, and making sure that those costs are minimized while increasing productivity and profits. With my service reports, I'm able to analyze when a piece of equipment came in, who serviced it, what was used. A lot of these reports can also be customized depending upon your configuration. So if you see a report in here that it's really close to what we want, but not necessarily everything we need. Customizations can be made depending upon your tool ops configuration. So as we've gone through a lot of the information today with tool ops, I wanted to wrap up uh, our presentation with uh, additional details, essentially highlighting a lot of the information we've gone over today and providing some also contact information for the group. So as we've gone through Sage Tool Ops today, depending upon your role within your business, each person throughout your company can take advantage of the tool. Your field users have increased productivity as well as accountability, making it easy for them to request tools, be accountable for the tools that they have, and ensure that nothing is ever lost from the field back to the yard. Your shop now can be notified of when certain tools need to be serviced based upon calibrations or metrics, and also tracking service history for those bigger pieces of equipment to ensure when the last time something was serviced or if something needs to be looked at again. 
Your warehouse now has visibility when low levels of items are hit, creating those tolerances for different pieces of consumables or materials, allow you to minimize the costs when reordering items for your business. The ease of use constantly connects the warehouse to the field to the shop, so everyone is essentially using the same solution, but specific to their role, ensuring that all that information is flowing back to the office and the owners to analyze job costs and billing, and an overall elimination of paperwork for the entire company. And with that, just wanted to wrap up. For more information on Sage Tool Ops or a personalized demonstration, be sure to reach out to your recorded account manager or consultant to contact us, and we'd be more than happy to get you more information. Uh, with the year end, it's highly uh, encouraged to upgrade to the latest 18.4 or version 300 CRE, and of course the version 22 for 100 contractor. Krista, if there's any uh, questions from the group, I'd be more than happy to take those at this time. Thank you. Okay, great. setup is the implementation piece. So we're not just going to hand it to you and say, hey, good luck. Uh, that is not the case. One of our specialists or a team of our specialists will work with you to ensure what are you doing now? Are you using another solution? Are you just using a spreadsheet? What's the most efficient way to get that into the tool ops database? And at that point, given all of your tools and equipment are now in the database, coming up with a workflow for your business so that now that we're tracking that information in tool ops, how is each person going to interact with the tool? Great question. Okay, the next question is what is the pricing? Ah, great question. Uh, there's three specific tiers for the pricing, uh, tool tracking, tool management, and tool enterprise. Uh, depending upon which feature set your company is looking to implement, uh, a lot of customers will start off with the tool tracking and tool management. And then as they grow, they move up to either tool tracking to tool management or tool management to tool enterprise. So with those three specific, I like to call them tiers, the pricing is mainly also contingent upon how many tools. That goes back to what I was mentioning about uh, unique tools versus quantity tools. So depending upon how your company wants to track your tools, whether that's, oh, we have 10 drills, so we wanna track 10 individual or unique drills, those would be 10. Uh, the, the tiers, uh, once uh, someone from according can kind of get you that pricing, depending upon how many tools you're looking at, will range from 500 tools all the way up to 30,000 and higher, depending upon how many tools you have to track. Great question. Okay, next question is, some of our employees are older and do not have smartphones. How can this be handled? If those are the field users um, out in the field, a lot of our customers are, you know, having company devices or whoever's out there, there there's definitely somebody with a smartphone. So they're usually the person that's tasked and assigned to be the champion user of tool ops. And as users become more and more familiar with using the tool, they'll be able to use that device, whichever you give them or whichever they have. Okay, I think that looks like all the questions we have so far. If you do have questions, um, I'll be sending out an email later with um, the recording and our contact information so you can feel free to reply. And um, that's it. So thank you everyone for attending. Thank you Kauhu for a great presentation and um, have a great day everyone. Bye now. Thanks Krista. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.